Back in 1983, I was a single mom raising children, uh, one in college, one in high school, and I was sitting at my desk. I worked for a couple of doctors in Santa Barbara, and it was 1.45 in the afternoon. The telephone rang, and on the other end of the receiver was a doctor that I had gone to see to have some test run and he was calling me with the results and he said Karen the results are all back and there's definitely a, some abnormalities and we're gonna have to do some further testing well immediately what came up for me was has the cancer returned do I have cancer again I hung up the phone and at that moment one of the doctors was coming back into the office I didn't in any way want him to realize that I was going through what I was going through. So I glanced down at my desk to really gain my composure. And as I did this, there was the back of a medical journal, and it was an Upjohn ad. And here was a little girl. And this little girl just had the sweetest smile. And in one hand, she had the hand of a Raggedy Ann doll. And immediately, I could relate to this child. So when the doctor asked me, what's up, Karen? Out poured, um, what do you think of this idea? What if I would dress up as Raggedy Ann? And I would walk across the street to Cottage Hospital and visit patients on my lunch hour. And he looked at me, being a conservative physician, and he said, well, I think that's a wonderful idea. But what's your intention, Karen? And I said, well, my intention is this. If I walk across the street to Cottage, and I go up to the nurses and I ask if there's anyone that they would like me to see, and they give me some names, and then I ask permission from the people they've given me, and they invite me into the room, their heart will open up, and they're going to feel my love and my unconditional support for them through this traumatic time in their life. He said, you pick up the phone right now, you call Cottage Administration, and let them know what you want to do, and I'll help you in any way I can. He turned around, I picked up the phone, call Administration, finished telling them what I wanted to do, and then I said, I can't believe what I just did. It didn't go unnoticed. Soon Karen started spending a lot of time with patients, and the staff and media noticed the difference she made. A friendly face, a warm touch, a listening ear, what one special woman gives each day to hospitalized patients in Santa Barbara, California. And Raggedy Ann is a beautiful person inside and out. That's what I call that. Hospital administrators who admit to being reluctant at first. But a very special Santa Barbara woman has a way of lifting their spirits, not just during Christmas, but all year round. But behind the smiling faces, Karen discovered that people who are seriously ill or injured are not only facing a physical challenge, but deep uncertainty, vulnerability, and their own mortality as well. She found that their heart and soul had a deep longing for a compassionate listener. She also discovered how many patients, especially in nursing homes, have no visitors at all. Do you have any other friends who come by? No. Karen's special talent was badly needed. The question was, could this be taught to others? In 1984, Karen started a foundation teaching volunteers of all ages, and the spirit caught on. It's such a wonderful feeling, and it's, it's such a th rich reward that stays with you for life. It's one of those things, it's like a gift forever, you know? It's, that's what you get. You get food for your soul. And I have fun. Yeah. 
And at my age, you will have some fun. As national news articles started to appear, even the White House noticed President Bush recognized Karen with his Point of Light Award. And Adventures in Caring started to get requests to teach from all over the country. Not just the raggedies, but volunteers in community and faith organizations also. We had to ask ourselves, how could we teach compassion in many places at the same time? Enter yours truly, Bent Meigen Visioneers, and in 1997 we produced the first video, just like the visits, with our script, following the volunteers and letting real life show us the way. <gasps> oh, I see. <laughs> Pretty look. Oh. How nice. You're just getting ready to have just your lunch. Just getting ready to have my lunch. As, would you rather that I come back, or can I just sit with you for a couple of minutes? What would you like? Okay, what, by her visual expression, what does she want? What does she really want? Her lunch. And it's so obvious. The video and the study guide became a bestseller, now distributed in over 5,000 churches and volunteer organizations all over America. One group in particular that picked up on the idea was the pre-med undergraduates at UCSB. I've been a volunteer with Adventures in Caring for a year now. Um, I did the first training session last year. And all I could say is that I've met Shelly, Karen, and Simon, and they are the most down-to-earth people, and they just welcomed me in there, and made me want to be a part of it and want to do it. I just think it's a wonderful program. If you guys, you guys just need to get involved in it, it's, it'll change your life, it really will. So. It's the most amazing experience I've ever had in my entire life. The training that developed involved direct experience, journaling, group dialogue, coaching others, and a little makeup. It's always a different experience whenever you walk around the curtain or knock on the door, you don't really know what you're going to see. And even though each floor is supposed to have like the same kind of patients on it, like they all have something different and they're all different ages, so I never know what I'm going to see, so it's kind of scary. So I'm, I'm terminal cancer, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. I've accepted it, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I prepare my family. I have a little ten-year-old boy and, you know, I had asked them here, like, how do I die? You know, I'm young. I know how old people die, but how do young people die? And she said, well, when the time comes, you'll come here probably, and when there's, when there's nothing more that the doctor can do, then you discuss with your doctor, you know, maybe it's time. This person, you know, they're going to die. But a healing, just by you taking an interest in them as a person, this person can die, but also have a healing, a healing of their heart. That's why I do this. I do this because I, I, I can make a connection with somebody and they realize what's really important to them. Lots of times it's family, lots of times it's God. Um, and to see that transition, is a, is a, it's a privilege, it's an honor. Yeah. I'm really, really happy you came by. I am too. I think I don't know what it's like to be 85, and I won't know till I get there, and all you can do is try and understand, and the best way is to talk to people who are there and really listen and really care about what's going on with them. I don't know what the magic is that takes place in a visit, but I know that it happens, and, and I wait for it, I live for it from week to week. Just knowing that you go in and you are literally helping someone to heal and you just make their day and it makes my day and meeting all these new people is just amazing. Raggedy Ann and Andy kept confounding the conventional wisdom of what patients needed. Our Raggedy David <laughs> has been very, very, very special to us. Now doctors and nurses were asking, could we teach healthcare professionals the core skills of compassion? 
There is so much for a person to learn in this day and age, no matter what role they're having in the health field, that it, it does become so easy to get overwhelmed by mm. all of that and the equipment and everything that has to be dealt with that it's very easy to lose sight of why am I here. I'm here because of the person in that bed or in that wheelchair, the person who really, it's the person who's needing to be healed. Although she's sick, oh, she don't have no sense. She's, she's 86 years old, she ain't got no sense. That's what they take it for granted, that people are that way, but they're not. Because I'm in past, I'm in past 80, and I, I think my brains are kind of working good. Hello. Again, we follow the gifted Good, caregivers, you? this time nurses and doctors, so into real-life scenarios. Great, nice to see you again. We even attempted using a few scripted lines. Thank you for watching. We've put this video together. Thank you for watching. Again. <laughs> Should I try that again? <laughs> the result, the medicine of compassion, along with its training manual, won the industry's highest award. So a humble idea has come a long way, for one simple reason. Compassion is needed to heal, to grow, and to thrive. It is as essential as air and water. Much is learned at the edge of life. Wisdom is passed on. Peace is shared like bread between souls. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. If there's a single word I must tell you, if there's a single thought I must teach, if there's an infinite body of wisdom, open your heart and let me reach. We hear it's now. We're all together, you're never alone We're here, it's now, we're all together, I am around you Wow. Yeah, I miss her, I bet you miss her more oh, than me, Oh, do I ever. Yeah. yeah. Touch me and you touch my brother Hold me or caress yourself Feel me cause I have no other you can heal me, can't you tell? We're here, it's now, we're all together, you'll never be long. We're here, it's now, we're all together, I am around you. We're here, it's now, we're all together, you'll never be long. We're here, it's now, we're all together, I am around you. I'll pay you and I kept saying no I don't accept any money I'm purely a volunteer and she was just like no I really want to pay you no I'm I'm a volunteer it's okay and she, then she kept saying oh God bless you God bless you know me that I live inside you nothing more is separate here speak the word and I abide you I will whisper in your ear we're here it's now we're all together you're never alone now we're all together, I am around you. We're here, it's now, we're all together, you're never alone. We're here, it's now, we're all together, I am, I am you. She didn't fill the empty space with chat. She was close to me and she held my hand and she gave me a big hug before she did that. And then she drew up a chair. I was afraid she'd leave too soon. And I was feeling like the frightened little girl that needed to be held in the, in the midnight with you know, a nightmare. What we're doing is helping people find a meaning in life, to find that true compassion that all of us have within us. It's just getting back in touch with it.